Let's continue with part two of our burglar alarm circuit design. In part one, we designed this latched circuit. And we said that this latched circuit could exist in two different states. One state is when both transistors are in the off state. And the other state is when both the PNP and the NPN transistors are in the on state. So let's examine both circuits and determine all of the node voltages and all of the branch currents. And let's start with the off circuit. So initially, the emitter base voltage on this PNP is zero volts, and that puts it in the off state. So that means that we have no current flowing in this 2K resistor. And so we also have six volts at the base. And since we have no current flowing in the collector, because this transistor is off, this current is zero. And since we have no current flowing through this 10K resistor, by Ohm's law, the voltage drop across this 10K is zero. So we have zero volts across this 10K. And the NPN is off, so its base emitter voltage is zero. And zero volts across 10K is no current flowing in the 10K. So we have zero volts across this 10K. So we have zero volts at the base of the NPN. We have six volts at the base of the PNP. And we have no collector current in the NPN. It's zero. And we have no current flowing in the emitter. That's zero. And no current, again, flowing in this branch. So we have zero current there. So let's look at the other circuit in the on condition. So the base emitter voltage on the PNP is by rule of thumb about 0.7 volts in the on condition. So in the on condition, we can run a quite a bit of current in the collector, but we limit our collector current by these two large 10K resistors. So what happens is this PNP transistor goes in, into saturation, and that means that this collector base junction becomes forward bias. And our collector rule of thumb emitter to collector voltage will be about say 200 millivolts or 0.2 volts. And if we're dropping 0.2 volts across this PNP and 6 volt power supply we have 5.8 volts at this node and we have 0.7 volts across the base emitter of the PNP. So we have, what, 5.3 volts at the base of the PNP. And we have a voltage divider. This 10K divides this 5.8 volts, divides it down to approximately 2.9 volts. And rule of thumb for the base emitter voltage is about 0.7 volts. So if we subtract 0.7 from this 2.9, we end up with 2.2 volts at the emitter of the NPN. And 2.2 volts across 1K is 2.2 milliamps in the emitter branch. And most of that 2.2 will end up flowing in the collector. So we have 2.2 milliamps. And this resistor, we have 0.7 volts across our 2K. So we have 0.35 milliamps. And I believe that leaves us with a fair amount of current flowing in our base terminal if we subtract 0.35 from our 2.2 collector current, we get the base current of the PNP 
1.85 milliamps. But there's one thing that we neglected in this circuit. We neglected the base current flowing in this NPN. And we know that that beta of this NPN is defined as the collector current divided by the base current. So if we take the collector current and divide it by beta, we can get the base current. And what I care about is, is the maximum base current flowing. That happens when beta is at the minimum. And if I look at this NPN transistor specification, the min beta, beta min, equals 40. So if I take this collector current and divide it by the min beta 40, I get the maximum base current that I can expect. And when I do that, this base current comes out, I believe that's 0 0.055 milliamps. Now that's going to have some effect on this voltage, this 2.9 volts. That's going to tend to drop that voltage down a little bit. And I, I want to show you a trick how to estimate how much that voltage goes down. If we have two resistors, this is connected to 5.8 volts, and we run a current as 0.055 milliamps, and each resistor is 10K. This is 10K. The change in voltage at this intermediate node is the parallel combination of these resistors times the current. And perhaps in a future video, we'll, we will prove that. But just take my word. So if I have 10K in parallel with 10K, the equivalent parallel resistor is 5K. It's half that amount, 5K times 0 0.055 milliamps gives me the change in voltage at this node. And I believe that comes out .275 volts. So actually my voltage is not 2.9 volts. It, this base current in the NPN drops that voltage down by an additional 0.275 volts. So that's kind of a lot. I'm not happy with that. So to fix this situation, I'm going to change this 10K resistor value. I'm going to drop that down to 3.3K. And likewise, for this other 10K, I'm going to drop that to 3.3K. Now my parallel combination is 3.3K divided by 2. So let's check what that is. That is, so I have the same current, 0 0.055 milliamps times my new parallel resistor, which is half of 3.3K, 1.65K. And if I multiply those together, I get 0 0.0. 9 volts, a little less than 100 millivolts. So I think that's tolerable. So that's pretty close to 2.9. That 2.9 may go down to 2.8, but this is pretty close. So I think I'm happy with this 3.3K. So hopefully this gives you an overview of how to look at the circuit and calculate the node voltages and their branch currents. And now, let's get on with the burglar alarm circuit design. Here I've added a few components shown in yellow to my last circuit. And what these components do is they enable the latch when triggered to automatically shut off after about 60 seconds. So let's see how this works. Let's assume that my latch is initially in the off condition. That this NPN is off 
and this PNP transistor is off. And if that's true, then I have my ground or my zero volts at this node. This is also ground or zero volts. This node up here is also zero volts or sitting at ground. So if I somehow trigger this PNP into the on condition, the voltage across this resistor capacitor network will suddenly go from zero, it'll jump up to approximately 5.8 volts. Now recall that we are losing about 0.2 volt drop across this PNP transistor when it's in saturation. So when I apply this voltage, this 5.8 volts across my resistor network, the voltage at the top plate of the capacitor, now remember that a capacitor resists change in voltage. So this voltage is going to ramp up very slowly and eventually reach 5.8 volts. And what happens is when this base voltage on this NPN transistor is equal to the base voltage on the other NPN transistor, which when the PNP transistor is on, that base voltage is about 2.9 volts. So when this base voltage gets to about 2.9 9 volts, the current splits. In the, the 1K resistor current splits between this tr transistor and this other transistor. And as this capacitor charges up a little more, the vast majority of the current will now flow in this branch, and essentially no current will flow in the NPN transistor at the left. And when that happens, the NPN transistor at the left shuts off. This collector current goes to zero. When that happens, there's no current feeding the base of the PNP. So this 2K resistor charges the PNP base voltage up to the supply, and the PNP transistor goes off. So everything shuts off. Once this, the voltage at this node gets to about 2.9 volts or a little more. And recall from a previous video that the time to do this, the time to reach half of the final voltage is equal to 0.693 times the time constant RC. So if I can adjust R and C to the correct values, I, I, can, I can set this delay time to about six, 60 seconds. So once triggered, this circuit will go into the on state for about 60 seconds. This capacitor at the right will charge up when it gets to about 2.9 volts or a little more. The transistor or the current is diverted into the transistor at NPN at the right and taken away from the NPN transistor at the left. The latch shuts down and the circuit actually resets itself. Once this, once the, this PNP goes off, this NPN goes off, this capacitor will discharge through these three resistors and the circuit will reset itself, waiting for an intruder to come and trigger it again. So let's, let's determine the value of R and C to produce about 60 second delay time. So this is kind of getting cluttered here, but bear with me. So the key thing here is that I have to have enough base current I sub B to divert all of the current 
into this NPN transistor at the left. And that current, recall, is 2.2 milliamps. So I want to divert 2.2 milliamps into this collector. And my base current under those conditions, if I assume a min beta of 40, this I sub B is equal to 0 0.055 milliamps. So I got to make sure that I have at least point, point, point 0.055 milliamps in this resistor in order to satisfy beta and get enough current switched into this NPN transistor. So when this voltage charges up to about 2.9 volts, I have about 5.8 volts at the top of the resistor. So my voltage across the resistor is 5.8 volts minus about 2.9 volts. And my current must be about 0 0.055 milliamps. So I can calculate my resistor, R, which is the voltage across the resistor divided by the current in the resistor. When I do that, I get R is about, I think that works out about 51 K ohms. So if I use R of about 47 K, I think that's a standard value. So if I choose 47k, that's a little under, that'll give me a little extra current, and that should be enough to satisfy my beta. So, so now let's determine the value of C. Now I know that 0.693 R times C is equal to my delay time, which I want to set for 60 seconds. And I know my R is 47K. So I can solve for my C. When I do that, I get C equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 3 farads, which is equal to one eight zero zero microfarads. Now I may want to choose a more standard value for my capacitance. I'm going to go a little higher on my capacitance and make my delay time a little larger. I'm going to go with a standard capacitor of two two zero zero microfarad. That will probably give me a little bit over 60 second delay, but the delay time is not super critical, so that's good enough. So in our next video, we'll continue with this design and we'll add a few more components. We'll add a, a triggering circuit and, and some other components.